Act 1, Scene 1, Ekus Oils. What's up guys, Acorn here. This is Kentucky Route Zero. Um, I've had a couple people request me to play this. this. I've owned this game since it first came out. I really wanted to play it, it looks awesome. But I've been hesitant because it's an adventure game. But, figure, oh, I'll play it, and figure it'd be a good idea because some of you know, the moving truck rumbles softly to itself. Painted on its side are the words, Lissette's Antiques, Furniture, Glassware, Curiosities. Some of you may know, I actually live in Kentucky. So this is kind of a at-home game, even though I don't think it's made here in Kentucky, but we'll see. Dog. Old Hound and Straw Hat both have seen better days. Alright. Oh, I can move. Oh, that's kind of cool. Tenant. Joseph sits between gas pumps in a Queen, queen Anne armchair. His hair is gray and his glasses darkened. Damn! Did you hear that wreck? Truck full of bottles! I don't know, beer bottles? Whiskey? Lost a tire or something, and spilled booze and glass all over the interstate. What a mess! I hope they don't come down here looking for anything. We blew a damn fuse and it's all shut off. Did I hear a dog? What's your dog's name? Um, it's called Blue. Her name is Blue. Blue sounds like a sweet old hound. I used to know a dog like that. Hey, here's some jerky for Blue. I made it myself. Didn't turn out too well. But I bet a dog will eat it. Getting late, right? I can feel the sun on my neck. I bet it's just a few feet off the horizon. Um. Yeah, we've, we've been driving all day. I don't want to be driving anymore. Let's watch the sunset. I've got a delivery to make on Dogwood, but I'd rather catch a sunset. Yeah, that's the truth. You've got to stop and breathe in that road. I bet while you're out driving, you let your eyes wander up the tree line, and you just... Well, I bet you're more of a poet than old Joseph. How long have you been working here? I've been working here a number of years. It's pretty okay. You know, I have an advanced degree and a few publications. It's pretty okay here. Listen, you and Blue would have been driving up and down 65 all night. Dogwood Drive is on the other side of, well, to get there, you gotta take the zero. The zero is a tough route to find, but you can use my computer to look up directions. You have to head down into the basement and reset the circuit breaker first. I'll be happy to have those whining, those whining lights back up anyway. It's too damn quiet out here. Basement door is back there in the office. Appreciate your help, friend. Oh, and here, take this lamp. It gets dark. Well, I guess I gotta go fix the fuse. What's up, Blue? Old hound and a straw hat. Both have seen better days. Same thing. Alright. What's this? Oh. Alright. Let's go take care of the fuse. Oh, going down to the basement. Ooh, spooky. Yeah, there's people over here. Basement people. Emily, Ben, and Bob sit in folding chairs behind a worn card table. Papers, oddly shaped dice, and highway maps cover the tabletop. Conway clears his throat. <clears throat> Have you all seen a breaker box down here? Oh, sorry, I didn't know there was anyone down here. Oh, those are my choices. Never mind. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, I didn't know there was anyone down here. To Bob. Did you hear something? Uh, nope. Sorry, I was looking at the rules again. Fine, just ignore me. It gets easier as you go. Look, you said you rolled a five, right? That means you get to pick up your marker and move it anywhere on the map. So, it's your turn now, right? Oh, yeah, I guess so. 
Where'd you put that 20-sided die? I don't see it. Did you drop it? Uh, should be easy enough to find. It glows in the dark. They're not very nice. They're just ignoring me. They're too engrossed in their D&D &D game, I guess. Um, I guess... I just need to get by you for a minute. I think it rolled off to the left there, but I don't see it. Well, I'm not going looking for it. It's too dark down there. Why don't you go down and get it, and I'll just study the rules here. Alright, maybe I'll turn off the light. Too dark. Okay. Can't go over there. They're in the way. Go down the stairs. Alright. Whoa. Sign? Oh, there we go. A dusty, rusty sign is bolted into the wall. These are the rules. No open flames near the gasoline. No consumption of beer or spirits on the premises. In case of sudden darkness, do not panic. Relax. Count backwards from five. Strictly limit time spent in the basement to fewer than three minutes of every hour. Okay. That's strange. Ah, there we go. Game piece. Conway picks up the glowing 20-sided die and inspects it. The number 5 is facing up. It's just a small piece of plastic, but it has a reassuring, almost comforting weight. He places the pocket in his jacket pocket. Can I go down here? No, I can't go down there. Alright. I'll give these people their die. And the people are gone. Where did the people go? Folding chairs are arranged around a worn card table. The chairs are empty, and the surface of the table is bare. Conway places the 20-sided Um, I'm going to keep the 20-sided die. Never know when it might be useful. Right? Always need a d20. Breaker. Breaker 1-9. Ooh. Lights are on. Flickering. Let's go back up. Exit. Exit the basement. I wonder where those people went. Ooh, music. Hey, Joseph. Got your lights back on for you. There it is. Just listen to those lights whine. Yep. Let's see. Say, there were some people down in your basement playing some kind of game, but they're gone now. Basement? No, I don't think so. Maybe that lamplight was playing tricks on you, huh? Well, strange things happen on the ground, especially in the dark. So, the computer's in the office. You're looking for Marquez. She knows her way around those roads. She'll get you to the zero. The password is... Uh, damn. You should feel it out. Muscle memory, you know? It's kind of long. Kind of like a short poem, I think. One of those short poems that really sums it all up. You'll figure it out. Great. Thanks. Big help. Alright. Go to the computer. Conway taps a key, waking the computer from its reverie. User. Uh, type Joseph. Password. Wheels slide loose, the stars drop away, I talk and listen to him talking. Let's go for the stars drop away. Throbs. The lights wide. Oh, cool. Now, I wonder if that's actually the password or if it just takes whatever you put in. How's it going in there? Figuring it all out? I'm sure you are. Uh, let's look at his messages. Message 1 is from Donald at hotmk.mail. Message 2 is from accounts at consolidated.mail. Let's read from Donald. From Donald. Subject, fragments dim of lovely forms. Joseph, I know it's been a while and I know you're still sore. There's a whole world in here. And we need your help to unmask it. 
Yes, the caves are cold and damp, and we are old and lame. Never mind. I can't even remember why I even started writing this. I miss those days in the lab with you and our dear Lula. Maybe you found your own Xanadu. Well, so have I. End of message. Alright. Let's read message two. From accounts at consolidated.mail. Account standing. Urgent. Dear Ecus Oils, this is an urgent automated message that your account is overdue by more than 14 days. In response, we have switched you to our low reliability dirty power plus plan. Consider making a payment immediately to obviate the need for us to switch you to the sustained brownout select. Sincerely, your friends at the Consolidated Power Company. End of message. That's probably why his power was out. Alright, no, we're done with messages now. Um, I don't want to go to address book yet. Let's look at the games. Games is not real. Okay. Fine. I don't want to play games anyway. Right, stupid games. Like Snake. Or Snake 2. Um, well, he said we're looking for Marquez. Why don't we just look for the zero? Address the zero is not real. That's why. How about Dogwood Drive? Dogwood Drive is not real. Okay, I guess we're going to Fort Marquez. Marquez Residence, 100 Macondo Lane. Head northeast on 65 and turn left as soon as you see that ugly tree that's always on fire. Look for the barn at the base of the mountain there. You can't miss it. Alright. Got it! Out there on my condo somewhere, right? Yeah, that's it. Hey, look! While you're down there, I loaded all that old TV of mine onto your truck. I borrowed that thing from Weaver Marquez a number of years ago. Now that the power is all weird over here, I can't pick up anything but static and public access anyway. She was always more of a reader, but maybe she'd want it back at home. It's a nice TV! Why are you yelling at me? Can you just wait till I come back outside? Alright. Oh, let's talk to Blue. Conway scratches behind Blue's right ear. How's it going, Blue? What do you think of this place? Seems like they're really on the rocks. What a treat! Here's some jerky from the tent. He's a bit odd, isn't he? Nah, he's alright. Alright, just had a one-way conversation with a dog named Blue, who's wearing a straw hat. It's okay with me. Sun's gone down. You and Blue better get on that road if you're gonna make your delivery. Alright, if you say so. See you later, Joseph. Let's drive the truck. Remember the directions? Because I don't. Uh, go north on 65, right? Oh, there's that tree that's always on fire. Tall black oak burns on a hill above the road. Oh, whoa! What happened? Dixie Highway. Notes. Don't have notes. Marquez Farm. Head northeast on 65 and turn left as soon as you see that ugly tree that's always on fire. So I went the wrong way. So, I'll go this way. Marquez Farm. We're on Mammoth Cave Parkway. Marquez Farm. No, no, no. Go to Marquez Farmhouse. Act 1, Scene 2. Marquez Farmhouse. Truck. 
Hey, Blue. You still just a dog wearing a hat? An old hound in a straw hat? Both have seen better days. All right. I'll talk to you. Rubs Blue's belly. I guess we just head up the path here, and the farmhouse is up the hill a bit. Keep an eye on the truck, all right? All right, lamp. Street lamp lights the base of a dusty path leading up the hill. Let's go up the path. Is blue coming too? Oh, hey, that's cool. House is coming to view. It's a graveyard. Family graveyard is set off to the side of the house. Headstones are inscribed with surnames of the unfortunate. Nowakowski, Padilla, Marquez. Well, I was going to knock on the front door, but I guess I'll just go right up to the house. Oh, I've got, I've got the TV. Um, light switch? Oh, I guess I'm just walking in. Hey! I was just thinking what a lovely house we have. Do you like it? We have, have you been here before? Did you happen to see an owl? Um, I didn't see any owl. I know, I saw it out the window once. Big, ugly thing. All sound and fury. Well, it's gone now. There used to be another house here, but we had it destroyed. And we built this one. It was very expensive. And we got quite underwater. What do you do for work? Is it too difficult for you? Oh, is it too difficult or do you like it very much? I was once a mathematician. Are you looking for something in particular here? Um, I drive deliveries for a small antique shop. I believe it's hard times for a small antique shop. It's hard times everywhere, even out here in our little farm. My parents stopped paying the bank a while back. I shouldn't even be here, but I just stayed. I have some notebooks. I'm only a little bored. I might prefer to watch TV occasionally. Actually, I have a TV here that I think belongs to you. Will we please set it up? Then I can explain to you how to get where you're going. The zero. I know. How did you know? I didn't even tell you that. I guess I'm setting up the TV. That's not how it's supposed to look. You've made a mistake setting it up. Is it a foreign object to you? Which of your parents was it who wouldn't allow you to watch television? Um, I know how to set up a TV. Okay, I'm skeptical. You have it all backwards. I'm not surprised. Are you? Have you been paying attention? I don't think you have. It's time to start paying attention now, Conway. Look closely at the television. Confused. This game is weird. Okay, there's the TV. No, you're going. You're going past the TV, Conway. You're looking out the back window, Conway. You're not. No. Hey, hey, wake up! You spaced out for a minute there. What do you keep out in that barn? You just be tools and feed. Then books. I think it's mostly spiders. I'm not going in there. The TV is picking up the wrong signal. My cousin Shannon would know more about it. She fixes TVs for a living. Well, she used to. I think the new models are giving her some trouble. Um, so... I really just need to get to the Zero. Honestly, I'm not convinced you should bother with the Zero. I'd much rather you find my cousin and fix my TV. But I'll get you headed the right way. So it's pretty easy. Get back on 65, heading north then take the first right after the artificial limb factory. From there, your arrival at the Zero is basically inevitable. Okay, head north on 65, and the, take a right after the artificial limb factory. Okay. Nice to know you, Conway. Keep your eyes open, especially in the dark. You're weird. I don't know what's going on. I'm confused. Dude, where'd Weaver go? 
just left me alone in this creepy house with his TV and no lights. I guess stove. A disused wood burning stove is set up in one ash dusted corner of the room. It's cold to the touch. Okay. Can I go downstairs? I guess not. Sink. An abandoned spider web stretches across the bottom of a saucepan. A skillet is seasoned with dust. Yum. So we're going outside. Well, I guess I got directions, general directions to the zero. Not exactly. I'm going to the truck. I'm going to the truck. Oh, music is playing. All right, blue. What is that? What is that? I just met the strangest lady. She kind of creeped me out, blue. Just had a weird energy. Come on, blue. What is that? Oh, there are people playing the music. Alright. Getting back on 65. Heading north. Take a right after factory. Creek runs alongside the highway and then turns toward a dirty brick building. The grinding drone from within the building is faintly audible from the interstate. Floodlights on the lawn illuminate smokestacks. At the edge of the building's parking lot, a large sign, partially obscured by trees, reads, "American Artificial Limb Factory. Take a right. Nope, no, take a, nope, take a right. Just keep going down. Dixie? No? Oh, maybe that's it. On ramp? Let's go for it. Act 1, scene 3. I guess I went to the right place. Elkhorn Valley. Well, Blue, what is this? How's it going, Blue? Hey, you got something on your hat. Pick that up on the road. You like it out here, don't you? Picking up strange dirt on the road. Alright. Well, what is this? That doesn't look safe. Entrance. Entrance to what? Shannon speaks in a large brick cell phone held up to her ear. Oh, I guess I'm Shannon now. Um, it's two hundred dollars for two weeks. But can I trust them just not to just change the locks? Yeah, and I appreciate that, but okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Love you. All right. No work tomorrow. Stranger. I know who that. That's Conway. Excuse me, ma'am. I saw the light on, and I'm looking for the on ramp to. Are you here to kick me off the property? Oh no, no. I guess you don't belong here either, do you? You work for the power company. The power company. Oh no, no. I once worked for an electrician for a few weeks, but I sort of drifted on before I really learned anything. 
I get it. You're a nomad. <laughs> well, I do drive a lot. Just me and the road, mostly. When the sun is out. Is that your job? Driving? Here's what it is. I drive deliveries for a shop called Lisette's Antiques. I'm out trying to finish the shop. You're making a delivery to the mine? Oh, uh, no. I have a delivery, delivery for 5 Dogwood Drive, and I can't remember ever seeing that address before. I heard I need to take a highway called the Zero. So I met this young lady named of Weaver Marquez. She sent me this way, so here I am. I'm common kind of a place for an on-ramp, but that's what it's been like so far anyway. With... what? Um... The Zero. Is that around here? I've never heard of the damned Zero. That doesn't sound like a real highway. But I know Weaver. I've known her all my life. She was... Uh, she's my cousin. I'm Shannon Marquez. Weaver doesn't lie. One time when we were younger, she told me my dad had been in a terrible car wreck. There was crushed metal everywhere, and we'd been hearing it echo through the house for years, she says. I was very upset, crying. Then my dad walked in the door, just come back from a trip to the junkyard collecting scrap metal to fashion into wind chimes. I was angry, but she said that it wasn't a joke, and it wasn't a lie. At the time, I thought she meant it as a riddle or a puzzle. But Weaver's not a puzzle. She's a mystery. So maybe the Zero is down here somewhere. Maybe it is. Well, I won't mind the company. I've got business down here myself. I talked to Weaver earlier this evening, too. Or anyway, she talked to me. It's hard to tell if she's listening sometimes. Weaver told me to come down here to the old Elkhorn mine. She said I'd find something I've been looking for. What are you looking for? I'm not exactly sure. I have a few ideas. I'll know it when I see it. It's not such a bad thing, you showing up now. All told, I'd rather not go down there alone. Your dog should stay up here, though. It's no place for a dog. It's an old mine. It runs pretty deep and tangled. If we're going down into it, find your on-ramp and whatever else, we've got to keep our bearings. Don't want to get turned around. I've got some gear here to measure that condu conductivity, frequency response, stuff like that. Maybe you can find a way to put a signal out ahead, do some analysis, and figure out what kind of topology we're going up against. Topology. Okay. Topology. That's the science of continuous space, my friend. The way this twisty maze of passages fits together. Alright, whatever you say. Let's follow Shannon. No work tomorrow. Hear that, Blue? No work tomorrow. Get the day off. It's PA system. I guess I get to play with it. Get out of the way, Shannon. That runs into the mine's PA system. Do you think it still works? Only one way to find out. Alright, give it a whirl. Hmm, what should I say? Uh, is anybody down there? Nothing. Hmm. Oh, there's no power. Yeah, okay. Even with this old mine was up and running, it was tricky to keep stuff powered. You know, the miners used to have to pay just to run the fans and the lights. Yeah, they got paid in these shitty plastic tokens. Coal script, you know? If you want to run the fans for a bit to clear the air up, well, you had to put a token in. My parents used to work here. So did Weaver's parents. I guess a lot of folks' parents worked here. Can we power it up? But we just have to free up some power for the PA system. Everything is rationed. Here, set that lamp up of yours, and I'll go and plug these ceiling lights. Uh. I try to think of something clever to say. I heard the speakers back there crackle a bit. It's on now, right? Try saying something into the mouthpiece. Well... Okay, I hear you. We need to measure the echo delay time and figure out how deep the tunnels run. Just make some noises into the mouthpiece. Um, hum's a deep tone. Blows on it. Damn, that's a long delay. These tunnels run deep. 
I bet some of them have ruptured or joined up with a cave system. Alright, I set up my spectrum analyzer. So just say something into the mouthpiece and we can get a sense of for how narrow the mine tunnels are. Don't be shy, just say anything that comes into your head. Tell me a story about something. Or, what did you have for breakfast today? Um... I had breakfast with Lucent. Um, she made biscuits. We talked about the day's work. Then I loaded the truck. Got it. Looks like the tunnels are pretty cramped. Yeah, low ceilings. Hope you're ready to stoop a bit. Eh, you're probably used to it. What the hell is that supposed to mean? One more test. We just need to know if the air is breathable. Or if it's too thin or too dense. Just sit real close to the mouthpiece and breathe. I'll measure the residence of your breath with the air in the tunnels. Just try to relax. Try to breathe naturally. Think about the road. Remember a moment when I was younger. Getting some pretty strong readings here. I think we're in good shape, but keep at it for a minute. Visualize a cold drink. Conway breathes and relaxes as a peel of feedback and loose rock engulfs him. Oh shit! That doesn't seem good. Act 1, Scene 4. Elkhorn Mine. Jesus, are you alright? What the hell? I'm okay. I've got you. You're alright. Shit, your leg is pinned. I'm gonna pull you out, but we have to get you out of here. There you go. Okay, are you hurt? Can you put any weight on that leg? It's fine. Just try to stand up. Careful, I'm right here. Damn, don't worry, I've got you. That leg is in bad shape. Here, let's get you onto the tram. There you go. Now, let's see if this thing has power. Well, okay. There's some luck, right? Should be able to ride this tram right out of one of the auxiliary exits. If there are any. I think there are. Um, I can walk. No way. You need to stay off that leg or you'll just do more damage. We'll just find the exit and then figure out what to do from there. That's our first priority. So, the controls are on your side. Let's get moving. Alright, guys. Well, that is Kentucky Route Zero. We're up to Act or Act 1, Scene 4. Uh, that's all I'm going for tonight. If you want, guys want to see more of this, see me keep going, uh, let me know. Um, uh, if not, I'm just going to play through it all myself. But if you want me to record and post it, I will. Just for you. I'm nice like that. So, this has been Acorn, it's Kentucky Route Zero, a little taste of home. I will see you guys next time. Mike.